Hi everyone, today's lesson will be about theory and it's a great lesson if you're a beginner. It's going to be about volume and tunnel values. Most nature objects have shapes and therefore volume. How to replicate volume on paper? We would need to have a structure which will help us to build a three-dimensional picture on a flat surface like paper. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon where I upload watercolor tutorial lessons weekly. Join me and become my student. Every object has different tunnel values and they're called light, half tones, shadows and reflected lights. If you look at my final picture and try to squint your eyes, you will see where exactly the light area and where the shadow and reflected light and uh, you can also see half tones and you can see the contrast. So how much lighter the light area and how much darker the shadow area so it's a good contrast between them means that tonal values are good on this picture. For this painting I've used sap green mixed with cadmium yellow for the light area of the pair. Second mixed for shadows I've used sap green plus burnt sienna. For dots on the pair I've used burnt sienna plus permanent rose and a dash of burnt amber. Plus, I've used Prussian blue mixed uh, with sap green for the right side of the pair and to add to half tone, um, to add it to my half tones. So I'm carefully placing uh, some very watery mixture on my first layer and uh, allowing it, allowing paint to go in, and um, gradually I add a little bit of more uh, of sap green with cadmium yellow, and I am. Uh, adding to the same wet layer but I add more color to the half tones and shady areas uh, gradually uh, allowing it to blend and then with um, collecting it with uh, my dry brush uh, I'm also doing lifting the pigment technique First layer now completely dry. I would like to point out here that please don't rush to complete it in one go. Um, allow it to set, allow it to um, dry 100%. So for the second wash I use more of uh, sap green and burnt sienna. Uh, and then I also use cold mixture sap green with Prussian blue. Uh, just just a little bit of painting uh, shadow with Russian using blue. more burnt sienna bit. and sap green allowing paint to go inside the paper and then lifting the pigment and blending it in
So here I'm using sap green and a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm adding this mixture to the edges of the pear and also on the area with uh, shadows because if again if you squint your eyes you will see the colder uh, areas on the pear that they seem colder um, and uh, uh, it also adds a nice color contrast to our warm pear Okay, while it's still uh, drying out, let's paint a stick with more sap green and yellow. And um, I also am going to go over again and add burnt amber on the top, just like on the reference picture, uh, that it has very intense brown color on top of the stick. Here, while it's still wet, you see I'm applying already a small dots. I'm adding texture to my pair, so I'm, uh, with the tip of the brush, I am uh, making light green um, sort of do uh, dots all over the pair to replicate the real pair. Now onto our wet on dry layer. Uh, here's a combination of colors and these colors are more saturated in colors uh, so they have more and more color uh, rather than water and I'm using burnt sienna and sap green and uh, I paint shadows and then I sort of blend it with the rest of the with the rest of the uh, pair and while shadow area is still wet, I apply even more color to our shadow. And then in some areas, I'm lifting the pigment. Then while it's still wet, let's paint our dots. So as you can see on the pair, there is lots and lots of dots and they have different sizes and even different colors. Uh, so I would be painting my dots in three or four different colors. So for the first layer, I want them to slightly uh, bleed. So they won't have um, intense colors and they won't have border so they're not going to be like perfect round dots they're going to be like with with bleeds basically uh, so and this is the ideal time uh, to do it so the, the paper is still wet uh, sort of damp on the way to dry out but not completely and it's a perfect time to add slight bleed so um, whatever paint you gonna apply to your paper it won't go really far out and um, so it's like I said it's a perfect time to do that and then later I will be applying more dots where while it will be dry on dry so the paper will be 100% dry and I also gonna be doing it in different colors so I am placing my dots all over the pair, darker ones uh, with more color and shady areas and uh, lighter mixture on the light areas. You also could see on the image on my painting that uh, I have dots of different uh, sizes, different tonal values, different colors all over the pair and some of them especially where the um, towards 
uh, edges of the pair, I even put my dots in such a way that they are uh, supporting the idea that this pair is round. So they're not flat, my dots. They go sort of over the pair and they have an even an, ang an angle. For my final touch, I use cadmium yellow and I'm going over uh, our area of half tone. As you can see on my final picture, this uh, bright yellow uh, color that's uh, going round half tones and you can see that this is uh, clarifying and defining light area from uh, shadow area or, and half tone and uh, I think now my painting is complete. Join me on Patreon to watch full tutorial and have a full access to my growing library with watercolour lessons which I add to my channel weekly. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment down below, subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Bye!